I'm Linus Walsh, and I'm an Ohio native, and I served in 386th Infantry Division, and I have brought here some of the pictures taken when we liberated the concentration camp Flossenburg, and also some narrative about uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, at the time he was executed. So tell me a little bit about this item. Uh, this was a uh, similar to what we found when we entered the camp in terms of the, the looks on the eyes of some of the uh, prisoners, POWs, and their uh, uh, weakness of them where we couldn't give them anything to eat. We tried to give them broth and the medical people said they couldn't handle it and uh, basically took it out of our hands. So when you saw these people, I mean, what was going through your well, mind? Well, I was only tw 20 years old at that time, and uh, we didn't realize that we were in a concentration camp, uh, but we were aware that the people were starving. They were laying on pallets, and several of them couldn't move. There were a few of them who were in a position to uh, talk to us. One in particular, for example, was a, a POW doctor from Budapest, and all he wanted from us was a tie. He was interested in respect. Uh, there was a Yugoslav POW who wanted a bike, and so we commanded a bike. And at that time, we were very, uh, we laughed at, the, at him walking up over the hill heading for Chalk. Yugoslavia with his bike, but in retrospect, I think he wanted to get home with the bike and he was walking to bring it home rather than to ride it home. Uh, one of the other things was quite interesting. Most of the cooks were Polish women, and uh, all they wanted to know is, could we could they go back with us to Hamtrak, Michigan, where the Polish uh, community was centered? Uh, we only were there about a day and a half, and then we moved on into the Czech border uh, as infantry soldiers. So tell me which concentration camp you went into? Flossenburg. Uh, uh, it was a camp run by SS. It, it wasn't the, the large number of uh, deaths like Dachau or Auschwitz, but it was uh, one where the military leaders were, were taken and executed, including Dietrich uh, Bonhoeffer a well-known uh, religious leader. Okay, what else do you have today? Well, I had this. Okay, let's see your photo. This was the town of Chev in Czechoslovakia. At the end of the war, we met the Russians there, and it was in Sudeten, Germany, and it was the last day of the war. And one of the interesting things was that uh, uh, the uh, Czechoslovakia people were still being attacked and they would come on the radio asking for uh, American help uh, to uh, stop the bombing of unidentified planes bombing the major cities yet on the last day of the war. So when you look back on your career now, give me some thoughts. I mean, when you think of, you know, like what was some some of the best times, the most important times, you tell well, me. One of the things I think uh, that sticks in my mind was when we were be laying on the ground in France and uh, uh, Western Germany, that the bombers would go over all night long and hear the groaning. And uh, then about 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning, you'd see a straggler coming back, trying to get back to Britain. And you just prayed that they uh, would make it the last few miles. That was one. Another experience was at Cheb, the Russian soldiers, several of them would, would sit next to a toilet and just spend hours flushing it because they had never had any experience with a toilet. Uh, on the other hand, there's some things we did. We used hand grenades and we'd throw them in the stream to catch, to get trout to eat. Now hopefully the military didn't know you were doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that and in the Hurkin forest we cut down trees and the German foresters just came unglued at us cutting down their beautiful forest. And in retrospect I think uh, I couldn't believe it we were doing some of those things. <laughs>